Now, if you've never used Surfgate before, you've never seen what happens, when you click surf left, the tab actually comes out on the right hand side. So this drags the right hand side of the boat down, it cleans up the wave on the left, which makes it a lot more surfable and a lot more usable. You get a lot more wave for your value and you can also move up and down. So what you want to do when you're wake surfing is have the boat completely loaded. So we want to fill all the sacks. We can go here to the presets, go surf left since we know we're going to be surfing on the left hand side. Click load, so all the ballast will start filling up. Once the ballast is 100%, the wedge is already engaged, already done for you on the correct side. Now at the moment we have the wedge on about two. We'll play with this as we go and we'll also play with the speed. So at the moment the speed's at about 10.8. So the power wedge on Malibu adds, can add about 500 kilos of extra ballast. This drags down the back, so you have to make sure that it's not too heavy, but also not too light. You want to have as much wave and as much weight as possible. Now we had it at about halfway, so we'll probably put in an extra 250 kilos of pressure on the boat, which is making that wave bigger again, giving it a nice lip and a nice curl over. It made it perfect to surf on, and we really enjoyed it. So one thing we definitely noticed was having the paddle wheel feature turned on instead of the GPS. It just kept the wave consistency a lot better. It kept the boat speed a lot easier. When you're not using paddle wheel and using the GPS, you're gonna have to adjust your speed going to and away from the current. The paddle wheel feature is pretty easy to go through the configuration. Just make sure it has this little paddle wheel icon. That's how you know you've got it in the correct setting. As you can see, the wave's not the greatest here, so it's a bit too crumbly, it's not really working the way it should. What we had to do, increase the speed a little bit, up to about 10.5. Once we got to 10.5, you saw the wave start curling over and looking perfect. Now, if you do this without a rider on, it makes it a lot better. When a rider's on, it is hard to tell whether your wave's perfect. So just make sure you get that wave perfect before you get someone at the back. Work on the speed, work on the power wedge. Always start low on the power wedge. So we start at about one or two, then we go up from there, one increment at a time, just finding that, and then getting your speed correct as well. So you don't want to do too much at once. You want to sort of edit each one individually so you can get it working to so it's primo. Now, you'll notice the wave being real washed out if it's bad. So take your time, get this right. Once you get it right, then you can go all day and it's not going to change. Now, another thing we need to watch when we're doing wake surfing is being more than 15 feet deep. So the depth is a big indicator of the wave size and also how good the quality of the wave is. Now, if you're in a, to somewhere a bit too shallow, maybe put some more weight towards the front, but generally, if you can get into anywhere more than 15 feet, you're gonna produce a lot better wave for wake surfing or wakeboarding. Keep this in mind.